And now for uh, something completely different. It's John Reed with the mayor of Northampton, David Narquitz. How you doing? I'm great, thanks, John. Actually, the 44th mayor, which is quite a lineage. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So the roots of this shoot go back to some city council meetings, filming with NCTV, and seeing you constantly referencing your iPad. I know you were doing some serious stuff on there. So mm -hmm. it sort of broached the whole issue of digital governments on a local level, what's happening in Northampton, Massachusetts. So why don't we start just with this whole phrase, digital governance, which is kind of wonky. Like, what does that mean to you, and do you think this matters on a local level? I think it does, and actually it was one of the things that I campaigned on when I ran for mayor, and um, one of the big pieces of my agenda um, in my first term and as well in my second term. Uh, I, think it, I think digital governance provides several different opportunities. First, it's a way to um, make government more open and transparent to, to residents, you know, providing information about, um, about what's happening in city government. Um, it's also a way for us to do our work more efficiently uh, with, with uh, resources always tight, particularly at the local level. Um, if we can find efficiencies by using technology, um, that's a bonus. Uh, and then actually, it's, it's allowed a way to really open up communication, I think, between government, uh, between government and citizens. It provides another way for uh, citizens to be able to weigh in on issues. Um, you know, whether it's people, uh, you know, using our mobile app to report potholes uh, yeah. or, or tree limbs. Noticed a few um, of those this winter. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Or, um, and then have sort of real-time feedback, like, yeah, we got that. Thanks for submitting that pothole. And then a week later getting something from, you know, from our DPW saying, you know, the pothole's been fixed. Yeah. Um, I think that has, uh, it's really opened up a lot of possibilities for the way that citizens um, interact with, with government. So tell us about Northampton's digital governance journey. Like, when did it begin, sir? You know, uh, we've uh, we've been on the cutting edge. I mean, we ha we were one of the first cities to have a website. Um, you know, we we actually just went through a whole process of revamping our city website. Um, you know, I put together when I first got elected. I put together uh, sort of an IT advisory committee made up of not only internal IT staff but actually experts in the community that were in the IT field to give me some recommendations about you know how we move forward and advance um, our capacity in that in that in that um, area and the website was really one that stood out because our website was a little dated um, it was pre social media you know I think I was talking to you about RSS right. feeds. everything know. was RSS based. exactly and which is great for a wonk like me but not it, for the it, average it, citizen exactly yeah. exactly yeah. and so um, so we did a whole process of really refreshing our website and making it more intuitive we always had lots of information online it was just much harder you really had to kind of uh, search around to find it. So we've tried to create a website that's more intuitive, you know, that has all the more modern um, things like, you know, links to social media, YouTube, all those kinds of things, um, as well as a more robust search engine. Uh, you know, electronic calendar is really important, particularly since we now have state laws that govern the way meetings right. have to be posted, uh, you know, 48 hours in advance and the kind of detail that we now have to provide under uh, new open government laws. So the website is, is a way for us to be able to comply with those laws. And you launched the new website in, I think you said December? December of uh, 2013. Okay. And, and uh, it's amazing how many hits we get and not only hits from from within Northampton, but hits from all around uh, the country. Um, so we really also view it as a tool uh, for visitors to the city um, and for businesses. You know, we see it as an important portal for businesses that want to maybe locate in Northampton, that want to do business here, as well as the many visitors that we get every year, because we are, uh, you know, a, a cultural uh, destination as well. And Northampton residents are nothing if not vocal, right? So Definitely. What, what kind of feedback are you, are you getting feedback on social channels? What what kind of feedback are you getting? We've been getting a lot of great feedback. Um, you know, we we uh, you know we I mentioned the um, the the app for being able to report potholes. We've had a lot of people who've who've availed themselves of that. We've got other modules. Um, uh, you know, for signing up to receive everything from you know when the next planning board agenda comes out to, you know, school board meetings. And so, and people have really been embracing that as a tool for staying informed about what's happening in city government or just sending, you know, uh, you know, I get people contact me on social media all the time. 
um, cause I'm sort of out there on social media. And so they, they, um, they feel quite comfortable sending me a Facebook message or tweeting me or, or, um, or what, however, uh, to be in touch with their government officials. And I think that's true for, for other, for my colleagues as well on the city council and school committee. Tell me about governing by iPad. We have your iPad here, which you can hold up. Sure. Viewers can see. Yeah. Are, are you literally managing the city on your iPad or, um, like, yes, what are you doing? And, and part of it is because my eyes have gotten so bad I can't do it all on the iPhone anymore. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, one of the things we did, uh, one, of the, one of the pieces of the IT stuff that I worked on is really moving to more cloud-based. Um, we, we were, uh, a lot of our stuff was a little old school, a lot of server-based stuff. Um, yeah. And uh, didn't take many server crashes for me to say we've got to get this stuff on the cloud. Enough with that. So you know we we've now moved over to Google Apps for government. Um, so we're all on a Gmail, you know, a Google based with Google Docs and Gmail. Um, and okay. so uh, so I can access my email, uh, you know, t any anywhere twenty four seven. Um, obviously, the website is functional on. Um, on a on a tablet or, or on a smartphone, so I'm you know I'm able to do everything from you know check email, approve spending requests, um, a lot of the documents that I have to review, I I ask for them in electronic uh, version because I otherwise I get buried in paper. Um, so you know I have lots of uh, doc PDFs. The budget, for example, is always a fingertip away that I can refer to because it's on my iPad. Yeah. Um, so things like that. It's it's uh, or I take notes. You know, I, people yeah. stop me, or I take pictures. You know, if I see yeah. a, if I see a, a tree limb or somebody talks to me about a street that wasn't plowed properly, it's easy to take a, fi a photo and send it to the DPW. So if you see on iPad in meetings, that means you're working. Generally, yeah. it means I'm working yeah. or tweeting yeah. or responding, or to, responding yeah. to something. Yeah. Sure. Exactly. So we talk about the digital world, and there's a whole bunch of challenges on a, on a governmental level. We read about these projects that are struggling and things like resources and communication and mm -hmm. culture change. For your vision of what's next for Northampton, what are the challenges you're going to have to overcome? I think, you know, I think a lot of it comes down to resources, to infrastructure, because you really, it's like, you know, it's like your roads, it's like your sewer system. I mean, the, the digital infrastructure, uh, which we know is always changing, um, and that's an expensive uh, investment that you have to make. You know, we're going through an interesting thing now in education because um, we have all these standardized tests now that kids are having to take at very early grade in intervals. And uh, one of the new things they're testing now is a computer-based test. So instead of sitting down and opening, you know, taking out your number two pencil, the computer testing is now they've been piloting um, doing this online. And so that's really challenged us because we now have to not only have the infrastructure to be able to support uh, you know, a cloud-based test like this, but also have enough devices for all of our kids to be able to use. So, you know, we've really had to invest in, um, in upgrading our, our technology at all of our schools, um, as well as working on making sure we have the devices to be able to allow them to test on. You said something to me off camera about the dreaded unfunded mandate where exactly rules are I mean handed down and exactly I mean we that and and the the school the education testing is is a is a case in point I mean they announced this pilot and they selected a bunch of communities who were going to take this test um, online and and um, and a lot you know I, and Northampton's in pretty good shape but I hate to think if uh, you know some of my colleagues in smaller rural communities that may not have the same resources, may not even have a good broadband connection, you know, to the internet, um, right. how they have to grapple with that. So those are, yeah. I mean, those are some of the challenges. Um, and again, technology is ever changing. And so you're constantly having to reinvest uh, to stay, uh, to stay on top of it. So you've, you've assumed responsibility for digital change and, and tra open information from your office, but what do citizens need to do to meet you halfway? What, what do you expect from them? You know, I think, um, I, I think, you know, the information, you know, we put all this information up there on the web and, um, and I think it's, and we hope that citizens are, are access, are using it, are utilizing it to really be engaged in city government. We actually have a, um, we have a, uh, a widget that on our website now that's kind of an engagement tool that we're trying out now 
that allows citizens to kind of start topics of discussion like you know you know wouldn't it be cool if we had a dog park or wouldn't it be great if we showed movies in the park on on weekends or something like that so we're actually we're you know it, it's we can put all this information up there for example one of the things we just launched uh, earlier in the year was a, what's called open checkbook which is actually putting the city's checkbook online so that they people citizens can actually see when we write it you know when we pay for X or for Y or write a check to the hardware store or pay for a new truck it's all there they can see it online um, my fear sometimes is I hope are people using it are people utilizing it are we mm -hmm. doing it um, is it is it a is it money well spent um, so you know I think you know the pothole thing has been a good case I think where we've seen people really buy into it and engage into it and actually start having fun uh, right. letting us know about what's going on. Yeah. Um, but but I think that's the, the challenge is we're trying to find ways to engage the citizenry, um, but citizens have to have to engage with us. Right. Um, we're trying to make it as easy as possible, but there's so many other, you know, distractions and so many other things in our in our wired twenty four seven life. Um, that you know, you want, you wonder whether you're competing with cat videos on yeah, yeah. on Facebook uh, as opposed to the 103 million dollar budget we just you know are trying to get past. Right now, I I met you and your work through the Northampton Community Television Project. So I started filming all these local governance meetings, mm -hmm. and I know that partnership's an important part of this transparent governance. Definitely, uh, definitely. Uh, do people actually watch these meetings? Is this an important part of extending the reach of what you're doing? I think so. I think they do. And it's, I mean, I, I run into people all the time. I'm always surprised, actually, at the number of people yeah. who stop me in the supermarket and say, oh, I saw you at the meeting the other, on the meeting the other Because viewers night. should know that if you haven't watched these meetings, they have a tendency to go a little long, shall we say? They're long. So and, it takes and, a little determination. Yeah, and some of the subject yeah. matter can be a little dry, a little wonky. But you said uh, it's kind of like a reality TV show. It's exactly. Like, it's sort of, yeah. I, I call it sort of the local reality TV show because, you know, I, and I think some people watch because you never know, you know, what's going to happen. What's going to happen. There can be, you know. Who might step up to the mic and raise some exactly, crusty exactly. issue. Exactly. Or yeah. there may be some tension that develops on the, uh, you know, between counselors or something like that. But, I mean, it's, it's great. I mean, I think it's, it's, uh, it's a good way. Um, you know, people, uh, you know, the, we, we're, we're at the local level, we're making the laws that people have to live by, we're spending their tax dollars, we're educating their children. So, you know, the fact that you can watch the school committee discuss, you know, the math curriculum or, or something like that, I mean, that's, that's as close as it gets to being involved in how your community is run. Well, there you have it, folks, digital governance in Northampton. Thanks for that inside look. Appreciate it. Thank you, John. Take care.